So I'm a planner, and uh, here, here, here at the seminar for architects, I'm still very privileged because we have a different mindset for the architects, and they will be more keen on the yeah, demand from the owner. However, for the planner, in addition to considering the demands from the, the owner, they have uh, more considerations. So, well, you know that for the Chinese authorities, especially over the past three decades, and uh, China is always uh, growing and. And uh, also, yeah, the infrastructure is also rising. And uh, you know that we have uh, get a lot of uh, revenue from the land resources and for the government. So for our Chinese authorities, all the yeah, China's uh, authorities, the governments, are different from other jurisdictions. Yeah, normally speaking, the government is uh, um, supposed to provide uh, services. However, yeah, for China, it is still developing. Yeah, we are catching up with other developed countries. Yeah, because um, in China, yeah, the land is uh, public owned. And uh, after the liberation, all the Chinese land is uh, public owned. And uh, once this uh, public um, land is sold, and then the government is able to get the revenue yeah, to make progresses. And now we can see that in China, we have already seen a lot of infrastructure thanks to this system and institution. Well, for China, and especially for Guangzhou CBD, and here it is the core area of uh, yeah, CBD. Not all the Guangzhou CBDs are here, because in north, yeah, we have another CBD yeah, centered by um, the stadium. At the very beginning, you can see um, yeah, Guangzhou. You can see that at the very beginning, you can see all these um, um, walls. Yeah, this is the scope of uh, the ancient walls. You can see that it was uh, so small. Yeah, maybe it is only yeah, six um, square kilometers. And now you know that uh, currently it is uh, has already been greatly expanded. And uh, for Guangzhou City, it is in a very special yeah, geography. In the north, uh, that is um, the Baiyue Mountain, and in the south, that is the Pearl River. And you can see that actually at the very beginning, yeah, it, the city was uh, that small. You can see that yeah, step by step it was uh, expanding yeah, to different uh, directions. And uh, while Guangzhou was uh, developing, so actually these um, are the wars in, in Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty in China. So the size was uh, very small. However, yeah, the business area is not located here. Yeah, it is uh, located in the west part of uh, Guangzhou. Yeah, that is uh, the core area for uh, living. And uh, there is a very famous uh, firm or company. So in Qing Dynasty, for a very long period of time, so it was a uh, very uh, famous and uh, port or a harbor. So in um, China, so at the very beginning, yeah, China was a very close country. We didn't do any foreign trade. We just maybe imported uh, some yeah, special products and uh, some spices. Yeah, but we didn't um, have uh, some other demand. Uh, but at that time, yeah, the Western countries uh, were already industrialized. Uh, and then you can see that it was um, yeah, the uh, picture before the Opium War. So it was located in western part of Guangzhou city. And also uh, seen from this um, map, at the very beginning, yeah, the CBD of uh, Guangzhou was uh, yeah, located in uh, Shishanghang. Yeah, after 1940s, so it was um, become a concession yeah, by um, British and French um, people. So it was a concession for these um, two countries. You know that in Shanghai, there were a lot of concessions. So that's why in, in Shanghai, you can see that it was um, planned uh, by the Westerners. However, in Guangzhou, yeah, there was only such a small place um, used as uh, the concession. And also the harbor was also located here. So that's why it has become the most important CBD. So that is the yeah, the walls. And this is the traditional yeah, CBD. So that is the historical story about Guangzhou. And also for Guangzhou urban development. So you can see different phases. So uh, in 1980s, 
So actually, um, to be exact, 1978. Yeah, thanks uh, to the philosopher by Mr. Deng Xiaoping. So since uh, 1978, uh, yeah, we have already seen very profound transformation because uh, yeah, we came to realize that, that uh, we have to develop uh, the country by market forces uh, rather than the ideas. So we have to incentivize uh, the great majority of people. So that's why it was a very hard job. So that's why we have uh, seen the transformation yeah, since the 1980s. Um, so you can see the master planning since the 1980s. So you can see that at that time, yeah, the city was um, rather small. So yeah, in the western part of Pearl River, you would see there's a master planning. Yeah, where was um, yeah, Zhujiang or Pearl, yeah, New Town? So this is uh, the area in 1980s. Uh, so there was uh, no imagination about the New Town. That was a very interesting story because uh, the U.S. Um, your consulate would like to have uh, their consulate here, but the local government didn't agree. Yeah, because uh, we have uh, planned another place uh, for the U.S. consulate. Can you move to there? Yeah, then the U.S. government had an agreement uh, with the uh, China government. Yeah, because um, before 2000, yeah, if there is any master planning, and then it should be allocated for U.S. consulate. So you can see that the U.S. and authorities um, had already yeah, imagine that it was a place for further yeah, development. Yeah, the U.S. Uh, yeah, expectation and the judgment was correct. Yeah, it was wrong for the Chinese authorities. And uh, then you can see in 1990s, um, you can see the new master planning. Yeah, because and actually before that there was a lot of um, yeah, major milestones because in 1978, yeah, across in China, yeah, actually yeah, Guangzhou yeah, was a ranking yeah, 23 in 1988 and uh, Guangzhou is number one in GDP. So that's uh, why yeah, from the 1980 to 1990, yeah, well, there was a very huge transformation. You can see that it was boring so dramatically. And then in 1990s, uh, yeah, the local government would like to develop uh, yeah, this new town, the Pearl River New Town. So you can see it is exactly located here. Yeah, yeah the purpose uh, of um, setting up this Pearl River New Town yeah, it was based on the land development because in order to yeah, relieve or, or yeah, actually develop the transportation system, yeah, because at that time the leader was an actually yeah, the leader yeah, actually born in the wartime and, uh, and he visited Hong Kong before and he believed uh, that Guangzhou can be as developed as Hong Kong. Yeah, we will see CBD. And tomorrow you will also visit uh, that, yeah, that is the central area. And he also imagined uh, the metro line. Yeah, but at that time, yeah, they didn't have money. Then they follow the example of um, Hong Kong because Hong Kong yeah, acquired the money by selling the land. Uh, then they built the metro. So that's why he decided to set up a new area like Central. And then they get the money yeah, from the land uh, sales. Uh, then the money can be used uh, to build uh, the metros. So this is a very straightforward decision. So in 1993, so you could see yeah, the situation of um, Pearl River yeah, New Town. It was a farmland, yeah, because and after reform and uh, opening up, and uh, um, Guangzhou was an, an actually like a pioneer at that time. Yeah, there was a horse racing area, but you know that uh, that is a casino, so it was a close at that time yeah because they believe that the horse racing yeah, will affect and our moral quality so you see this is used to be a farming land uh, many roads were not built by then it was simply the type of uh, farmland as it were in, back in 1993 the Pearl River new town was uh, the scene was like that it's an agricultural land, but this is where we are sitting upon now. So we're proposing building a new city center, but how? At that time, we have a very important competition. We actually held an international competition in 1993, and we got a great plan. Supplied by a planner in Boston, Thomas, uh, Madam Thomas. Well, she used to serve as the president of the U.S. Planning uh, Commission. You see, this is a great plan. If you learn, if you know Guangzhou, you, you just talk about the island, Xiamin. The Xiamin is only 20 hectares used as a concession, but it was a very simple plan. So this plan looks pretty similar. 
like that in New York, like that of Boston. This is really a planning in time of uncertainty. This is the best way to plan because it has a lot of flexibility. It can be scaled up or down. You can offer space for one building or a cluster of buildings. Most importantly, it set up a central park. We already have a central park. This is where we are now. This access line, and that's the access line. This is very important access for Guangzhou. You know, if you move north, that was in 1980. We have a sports stadium, and the sports stadium provide a great public space. If you, if you put them together and align them together, now we have a central access for Guangzhou. So that was planned by a U.S. consultant, and that was a very important concept to begin with. There was another. A concept planned by Hong Kong architect. They believe this is what CBD should look like. So, interestingly, you see, the understanding of land by a Hong Kongese versus American is so different because Hong Kong doesn't have much land. They, whereas in U.S., they have plenty of land supply. So the architects or planners' vision. They are、uh, really taking a different angle compared with architect from Hong Kong. So that was the plan. That was a design by a Guangzhou local planner. So it's more like a residential area. A lot of people do not understand the concept of CBD back then. Well, actually, even my, for myself, I only visit U.S. and Europe after planning the Pearl River New Town. We're starting from a poor area. And, but now, of course,、uh, we we got to have a lot to learn. We still have a lot of shortcomings and mistakes because we weren't having the right horizon. Our leadership has a broader horizon, but we are limited in our scopes. So at that time, the government decided to adopt the Americans'、uh, plan with access, with and also with and also in 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 consideration of the height. Uh, planned by the Hong Kong architects. This is similar to the zoning plan. This is what we call the regulatory plan. Well, this is the、uh, volume or the models.、Uh, by the riverside, there will be whole rises and higher rises away from the river, so everybody can see the river. But actually, you couldn't see the river. You can only see the rooftops because the river is not wide enough. So there's only these、uh, few rows of、uh, buildings have、uh, river view. But still, this is a very important development project in Guangzhou. There are six square kilometers in size. There's a lot of development to be done over the six、uh, kilometers. Another view. Well, starting it was started in 1993 and it bumped into 1997, where Asian financial crisis hit us hard, and we just prepared the land for development. We just prepared the land, but the market demand vanished. A lot of residential office were vacated. The highest was about thirty percent vacant. That was in 1990. We have a run of this construction. So at that time, there's a different views within the government. They were saying, "Well, we cannot sustain such a huge CBD. Guangzhou cannot really find demand to fill the needs. So we're thinking, can we convert the CBD into residential? Because residential obviously is more profitable." You can easily find demand to fill them. So this is what we were. So what I was、uh, leading to do. So I was deciding. We were thinking about: Do we want to continue to develop CBD or not? So in two year two thousand, there's a new opportunity that was in. This is before year two thousand. This is the physical boundary of Guangzhou. This is after year two thousand. The physical boundary. In Chinese government, the system is complicated to explain. Just、uh, we can only collect tax from this region, but now we collect tax from the broader region. So that really make、uh, significant changes. Guangzhou is now expanding our physical boundary, so we can tax more region. So in this case, we used to just move from Baiyu Mountain to Pearl River. Uh, well, now we actually cover a wider scope. We have the mountain, field, ocean, and the city. I was leading the.、Uh, I was drawing this、uh, this map with the Guangzhou strategy. 
So we are now moving Guangzhou into a regional prefecture. Uh, from Nansha to here is about 55 kilometers. So we are planning Guangzhou at such a larger scale. This is where per revenue town. You see, interestingly, after 2000, with the new opportunity, the position of Pearl River New Town is further augmented. In year 2000, GDP in Guangzhou is about 295 billion. 295 billion. Last year, Guangzhou's GDP was uh, 1.8 trillion. So the tax collected is 500 billion, 500 billion uh, tax revenue from Guangzhou municipal government. Of course, it's spent very little. 75 percent will be, you know, handed back to Beijing. Shenzhen is in better position because in Shenzhen they can retain, not they don't have to submit the tax to provincial government. They retain. 100 billion more than Guangzhou. If you compare with Hong Kong, Hong Kong again collect 500 billion in tax revenue and they keep them all. So the Hong Kong should have, should provide four times of public services, public goods compared with Guangzhou. Of course, what Guangzhou can do is we can sell land and we get uh, land sales proceeds. So this is actually further enhanced the position of the new river, uh, Pearl River New Town. So we have to continue to develop this into CBD rather than residential. So we'll further look at the uh, geographical justification. This is in the north, the sta stadium. We were the south, with the, with the south to the stadium. We should develop our CBD to be in the integral part and continuum with the southern part. And we're proposing a 21st century central CBD. At that time, the mayor of Guangzhou adopted this idea. Mayor commissioned us with this study because the mayor believed this place should be CBD. But the mayor has to come up with a research finding to respond to those people who are skeptical. So after uh, 2003, when the physical condition started to improve, and we started to build this piece of land in six or seven years. After financial crisis, demand recovered, and we quickly built, built up this uh, uh, piece of land. So in year 1999, we hope the city to be developed in an even better manner. We spend even more time for competitions, like this central city access. We adopted the plan by Tong. Uh, this is the plan by Tongqi University. This is a plan by Guangzhou Planning Institution and the uh, uh, Guangzhou University of uh, Technology. So you see, this is very interesting. This is uh, in uh, Macau. There is one single axis. We think it's too simple. We wanted to to look like a bowling lane. So we propose that on this island we want to build a park because based on our calculations, so much population, we have to have a green space. So this island was planned to be a green island, a small plaza, and and this um, metro station will be beneath the uh, island. So in year 1999, compared with the previous zoning plan, is much different. I was leading the zoning. We have done a lot of adjustments. We have the secondary protection system. The protection system is now completed now. The connected facilities, they are all connected, but they are not finished yet. So we haven't seen efficiency yet. It's not fully connected. A lot of people were saying, do we need to continue building them? I was saying, if you stop now, all the completed uh, protection walks will not matter. You have to keep it in a closed loop. So we shouldn't just uh, give up on our strategy because of uh, frustration. This is really putting the politicians' uh, determination to the test. At that time, Guangzhou has a great leader at the time as a mayor who uh, stick to it. Very often, you know, politician is even the, having a longer horizon view compared to architects or plan, planners. So you see a major change here is the high rises are moved to the riverside. The high rises are by the riverside now instead of moving back.
because we believe in such a beautiful area by the river with such a vertical lines. That's a very sharp visual impact. And would that be a viewing tower? We're thinking, should we have a viewing tower? Because in Shanghai we have a, you know, tower, Toronto Tower, uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, one not in Guangzhou. So we, this actually provide imagination to politicians. They would also like to have a tower. So we put forward a proposal. I would say one picture speak more than a thousand words because if you provide a picture, it really give an intuitive imagination. So later on, we propose that we want. This is what we want to do along this axis, and we search when we provide more architectural design connecting to the Tianhe Stadium or the way to this uh, Pearl River new town compared with the old plan and there's a new plan you see there's a significant changes I was talking to Mr. Chung regarding these two big towers we thought about them as being equal heights but now different heights some people find it in the grad but I think it's acceptable because Guangzhou is a city of freedom where capitalists are free to give their uh, you know, give that play. There should be equal height in Beijing, but we can afford to have different heights in Guangzhou. So in year 2001, we have the further plan for the central plaza. So we have a shape, but how do we turn the shape into landscape? Then we come up with some problem. We have four plans, four proposals, and I talked to the mayor and talked to the plan, um, planning commissioner. I was saying none of this works. Let me do it. So we come up with SWA. We work with SWA and we come up with this plan. So this is the plan. Is a derived version. They are not as pure as this one because the final plan is the derived version. This is the plan by SWA. They cost eight hundred thousand dollars. We keep nothing. All the eight hundred thousand dollar was given to SWA. The government doesn't really want to spend money on planning. Very often, we uh, the planning budget that we have is much smaller than other people's, uh, even a smaller project. So, so this is a, this is very interesting. This is in year two thousand two. This is what uh, Peru a new town looks like. But you see, some are taking shapes now. By two thousand five, we have another e competition. We want to uh, plan it further. We want to develop underground space. Right now, we have three hundred thousand square meters of underground space. We come up with a we we talk to a Japanese consultant, and I, I like this plan. I was involved in this plan. Of course, you always say it's the best when you are involved. But that plan wasn't adopted. It is one of the winning proposal at the competition, but it was not finally adopted. This plan was adopted. Uh, it was a it was a by Germany's Obermeier in Germany. It is exciting plan. Our plan, uh, there's a lot of islands and rivers, and uh, turn these rivers in the residential streets, and the islands were linked by bridges. But the German plan was a great view. It was like earthquake. After earthquake, we see a chasm, and you look down, you have APM, uh, the light uh, metro. Between the two towers, there was a small tower, and then in the evening, there's a volcano eruption. That's a how creative. But this is a too much to swallow by politicians. They don't think this is auspicious enough. A lot of people believe in feng shui. Uh, this is too much to swallow. So in the end, they still come up. They they still do the planning, but it was not as pure a design as it was uh, as it was. So this is such a great plan, and. But we have uh, 300,000 square meters of space under the ground level. 
Right. Uh, the plan is a very important planning, and these are the people. The man in the middle was the mayor, and who used to be, and uh, the guy next to him used to be, uh, uh, and now he's the governor of Guangdong Province. Now, those, all those people are really determined. Which is also why we made it in the end. Because when the economy was bad, when physical revenue was in shortage, we tap into the physical resources to build this uh, library. The library is built by a U.S. a Japanese uh, uh, architect, and the uh, Guangdong Museum, and the Guangzhou Opera by Jahajadi, and the Guangdong Museum. So this is re this is really Guangzhou government putting their money here to increase the value of the land by setting up all these museums, libraries, and everything. And this is a twin tower competition. You see, on the left, the tower was already built. That was the uh, winning plan during that competition. In 2010, most of the constructions were completed. We invest about 10 billion. The viewing tower is about 2 billion, 2.8 billion with the uh, Canton Tower to build this uh, Canton Tower. You see, all these designs were very open-minded. We adopted international competition. We're bringing international architects. Those are not very well known, but this is a great. Well, but he's well known now because of the Canton Tower. But so, so this speaks to the openness of Guangzhou, and we have a system that all the riverside buildings they have to be acquired by international competition. The other buildings can be acquired by domestic competition. That system was approved in 2003, and that was in force until 2008. But then the system was uh, changed because the new leader uh, thought twice. So you have SOM design, we have the Nippon, uh, Nippon construction, a lot of uh, foreign architects. We have to open up the market so the foreign architects can compete on this project so that we can have great designs. But many developers and owners will say, I have my view, I have my ideas. So in the end, I was talking to the Ministry of Construction. What kind of architects do we choose? We shouldn't have. Uh, we shouldn't allow the developers to have a hundred percent say. Even if the developer or owner put in hundred percent of the money, they are, they do not have the final say because this is even if it's a private investment, it's a public image. It should be decided by the public. It should be decided by the expert, not by the person who pays for it. There are still some great projects like the CTF Tower. This is a great one. It is the vision by the developers. This is great. But there are some other developers who have a poor taste, and then you will come up with some weird designs. So by competitions, uh, we have a range of uh, buildings now. The success of the Pearl River New Town, now in summary, as a planner, I think in architecture or planning in China, I feel it's my good fortune to be involved in this period of time when Chinese economy is catching up and we can actually see what we plan got built before we die. A lot of planners they didn't live to see the planned uh, vision come to come to life. But this is really great. We take it three years to be built. It took us 20 years in total, from the vision to the final completion of the Perva Delta, uh, per Perva New Town. This is really rem remarkable. Of course, the process was accelerated. So you can see that it was done in 1993. Yeah, that was taken in 2002. And this was taken in 2010. You can see that it already took the shape and the parks and also the access. And we believe that yeah, yeah, design is um, quite interesting. Yeah, we can create something new for the world, however, for the planners. And we are more keen that after the form, and we can provide more public values. So we believe that the architects and also the planners, and, and uh, we have to the shared responsibility to expand uh, the public values and, yeah, for all the people. So I think this is uh, my presentation. Thank you for your listening.